Right, now let's get to our, um, our Eastern Bloc uh, radios. This is quite a nice one. So this is a bit later, I think this is uh, mid to late 1970s and obviously it doesn't quite fit in with the rest but I was looking for something else in the cellar earlier on and I, um, I just happened to stumble across it in a box so I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd dig it out. It's a uh, Vega 404 and Vega, a lot of um, Russian, Russian electronics that were sold in the UK seem to be sold under the uh, Vega brand. I've got um, a few small, like five inch black and white TVs in the cellar, and I think they're Vega brand as well. They're definitely um, like Soviet, uh, Soviet era stuff. Unfortunately, not a single one of them worked. Um, they're great, really nice looking little TVs. I'd love to play with them, but um, I think every single one of them has a bad line output transformer in it. But anyway, let's um, let's see if this is going to. Well, that doesn't in that doesn't inspire confidence. The fact that the the wave change switch is kind of just hanging. It's not really doing very much. I wonder if this has been dropped. Kind of like hanging out there. Let's see what it needs battery wise. That's quite nice. It's actually got its shoulder strap, and this literally was uh, the idea of this was that you clip them, clip them in. Let me get you up a bit. You see, clip them in like that. I didn't realise it had this. That clips on that side like that, and you can literally, you know, put it around your um, shoulder and walk with it. It is a nice. It is quite a nice little set this. I'm sure with it being a um, one of these Russian AM sets, the AM radios, they all seem to be quite sensitive. It might be a nice boat radio this actually, because I always like to swap about the little uh, radios I keep on my boat. And if I can get this working it would make a nice, um, a nice one to have on the boat for a while. Let's see what we need battery wise. I think it can run, I think it could either have a battery pack or I just run on a um, AA battery actually Cause it's got a battery snap on there for a AA but this looks like it could actually slip into something and possibly use like you know um, a number of double A's or something like that let's uh, see if it'll do anything but yeah, I don't know if we're getting a, a pop, an on pop then or not, we're certainly not getting any any signs of life. That's a, um, a dial illumination button. Quite a few of the Russian radios have that. So um, if you're using it at night, you just hold that in while you see what the dial is. Obviously, it's just a filament bulb, so you can't leave it switched on, or else you drain your battery down. So it's just a little push to make um, button. But that doesn't seem to be working either. So it could just be that the bulb's gone. But that's not. Um, that's not doing anything and we're not getting any did we get a pop then though? or we're getting a pop out of it, a pop out of the speaker and we can try that, so I'll just leave it switched on and we'll just try disconnecting the battery and see whether um, it makes a popping noise yeah so it's not completely dead but it's not far off so again, that's going to be uh, that'll make an interesting um, that'll make an interesting little repair video. Right now, down to the uh, really interesting ones. And that's uh, hold on, hold on, put that with them because I don't want to lose that um, strap. That's these. Now these are all these are Russian again. Um, I don't know any what any of my viewers are um, familiar or fans of the 1960s. Um, TV show The Prisoner, but in one of the episodes of The Prisoner, he um, finds um, a body that's washed up on shore. And when he's going through looking what's on this body, he finds a little radio in the guy's pocket. And there's a whole story about him having a trial for having this radio and what have you. But um, the thing is, um, it's actually one of this model. And I mean, 
when was the prisoner come out? Was it? It was the early nineteen sixties, wasn't it? And um, this, I think, was like literally like one of the smallest radios you could get at the time. I said the Russian, and um, they, they were made, They were sold under two brands. Um, and I've got one of each here. These are not in excellent condition. I will say they are in quite poor condition, actually. But um, yeah, there. We've got a, um, I think this one, yeah, this is a Cosmos. That one is actually in somewhat better condition. And then we have this one that's a uh, Microsonic. Now, they're both identical. They're probably both made in exactly the same plant from the same toolings and everything. And uh, You found this a lot with Russian stuff, that they'd, um, they'd make um, one radio and sell it under about four or five different brands. I mean, these are a good case in point. These are um, Signal. But I've seen these branded as Vega, I've seen them branded as a number of other uh, different radios as well, and they're all exactly the same. But um, these little micro radios, like I said, they um, was either done under the Microsonic or the Cosmos um, brands. And they really were very, very small for the time. Like I, said, I think probably about 1963 or around that time that um, these came out. I mean, well, we've got that little Hong Kong set there. That's obviously around 1963, well, judging by the date that's in it. Um, I mean, these are well, much smaller than that, and I believe they actually have quite a bit more of advanced actual um, circuit in them. The radio used in them is quite um, advanced. I've never had one of these playing. I got these years and years ago. Um, well, you can still get them relatively cheap. They do sell for quite a chunk of money, These, especially in full working order. I said these aren't, um, this one's even missing bits, I mean it's missing the little aerial connector at the end there, is it the aerial or is it the headphone? Yes, yeah, the earphone connector that should be in there, that's missing off this one. Um, if we get inside it, very, very, very compact. Um, I don't even know whether I'd dare to try and work on one of these things to be honest, just risk of making it all so much worse. Um, the other thing is powering them. Uh, they were originally designed to run off rechargeable batteries. I mean, like I said, this is in the 1960s. And basically, you had two rechargeable cells that fit in there. And you had a plug in wall charger, um, which apparently had a habit of exploding. Um, because they used a capacitive dropper in them to um, drop the mains down and the capacitors weren't very good in them and um, they did, apparently did have a habit of um, exploding but yeah you had the you know, dedicated uh, rechargeable batteries that you charged in a little wall charger took them out put them in this and that's how the uh, radios played so uh, I would like to possibly try and get one of them uh, working one day. I do have something in mind actually that I've, I picked up the other day um, on the market to possibly think about either getting one of these two working or this which I think is even cooler and I've never seen another one of these. It's basically it's the same thing, it's a, micro, it's a Russian micro radio, same age. It's very very slightly bigger. Get, oh, this is a uh, this is branded a, Cro a Corona, but the different. I mean, if you look, it literally isn't much bigger than the, um, the little Microsonics. So it's very very yellowed where the sun where the sun's um, got to it. It should be a lovely bright white like that all over, and it has really 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 yellowed that. But this one's. Um, long wave and medium wave. So it's about the same age, about early 1960s. Absolutely tiny little radio. I would love to try and get this one um, this one working. And um, with that in mind, like I said, obviously the batteries are just not available anymore. It would be two little batteries like that. And like I said, you had a plug-in charger that you plugged them in and charged them. But what I got the other day, I was um, on the local market and I've been thinking about these for a while and how I could uh, make a, something to replace that um, charger with and the batteries with 
and they were flogging these. They're um, loveecig.com and they're, they're electronic cigarettes. And these were, they, I don't know whether they're catalogue returns, or, I mean they were, I don't think they're faulty or anything because they were in cellophane, you know, they were still packed. But the guy had a, boxes and boxes of them and he was selling them for a pound each. Now, like I said, I'm not into smoking. I'm certainly not going to um, take up vaping. But, what I bought it for. We've got a little USB charger there. And the cigarette itself. We um, dispense with all the bits we don't want. That there contains a tiny little rechargeable battery. Now what I was wondering is, I presume it'll be a couple of volts, like two or three volts, that little battery. Now they, these radios, they're like one and a half volts, you need like three volts, two and a half volts to um, power them. I'm wondering if I could do anything using the insides of that and then the USB charger to actually um, charge it up. I said for a quid I thought it was worth buying just to, um, just to play with. And to be honest, I can gut, the, gut all the stuff out of there, and that's a nice little case to um, keep stuff and keep my USB sticks in and um, stuff like that. So I think it was worth a um, worth a quid just to um, just to play with. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, it was just a quick little. Well, quick. I've gone on for half an hour. I'm to bloody hell. Um, just a quick little um, video on some of these little um, 1960s and 70s uh, transistor radios I've got. Like I said, I think in some future videos, when my life's got slightly less hectic, because Amanda's due in um, a couple of days, so uh, <laughs> things are going to get chaotic. Um, we're just uh, we're literally just waiting on um, finalisation of flights at the moment, and she'll be hopefully flying over in um, a few days' time. So if that happens, like I said, obviously I won't be making videos um, for a while. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, hopefully in the future we'll have a look at perhaps getting some of these ones that are dead or not working very well. Um, well, that's all of them, isn't it? Oh well. The donor radio, <laughs> the radio which um, I thought was only suitable for spares, actually seems to be the only one that's actually performing um, ad adamantly. Um, all the rest, obviously, like I said, need work on them. But yeah, we'll um, we'll play with some of these old radios in a um, upcoming video. So um, I'll say uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.